Because I never played with a band. I always wanted to be in a yeah. band. But I never knew. You seem like when you was buying a piano, you were so you were so locked Dude, in and happy. I was man. so and I was so nervous playing the fucking piano, and I was trying to like emulate like Ray Charles too. <laughs> Wait, do that again. Do that again. Do the Ray Charles. Ray again. Charles too. <laughs> it's this. It's this one shot. If you go and watch the Jimmy Fallon performance tonight, it's this one shot where <laughs> I'm at the piano and I turn dead at the camera. I look so retarded, like. Is like this. <laughs> and it's because I was so nervous, but I was trying to be Ray Charles. But that was the sickest moment because it's like I'm, I was finally doing what I what influenced me the most and shit. And then and feeling mother, comfortable then doing motherfuckers it, right? thought that was it until I turned that shit around <laughs> and I fucking dropped that double 23 and jumped around on you bitch niggas. <laughs> The whole, the whole, uh, the Fallon show has been good to you. That, that's dude, Jimmy right? Fallon's sick because he was the first one to like. Like, like, again, just like Mountain Dew, he was one of the first that he looked past everything and just seen, like, just some kids just having fun and just that were talented. And he was just like, yeah, come on. And yeah. he, he let us do whatever. And that Jimmy Fallon's performance changed everything. Yeah, because, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, that's my introduction to you. And then I went back and I downloaded everything. And I was like, are you filming this? Yeah, we definitely Where's are. the camera? It's everywhere. Okay. <laughs> No, but it's like, I think that, it's like you said, how sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, look sexy into the camera. No, but the whole imaging, like, that's what people would say about you guys. You guys are hardcore, 666, and then watch the Earl video, and someone's vomiting, and like, all that. But then what I got connected to was like, you were these, you was this young kid building this movement, and you felt like the blogs of that era weren't recognizing you, or giving you a chance, and you kind of rebelled against it, and you just wanted to be heard, you know, like yeah, it was, the energy of it that was in the just, beginning. I was just, I was just salty, because it was, it was like dudes around LA that like was fucking making music and stuff, and I was like, yo, this shit butt, this shit weak, like why do they get post, and I'm over here, we're over here doing so much, and they're just not fucking with it, and it was just to a point I've always been defiant too, so I was just like, "All right, suck my dick, fuck y'all." Like, I'll just I'll figure this shit out on my own, and that just that just slowly caught on. And when people just start catching on, it was just crazy. Like, oh, people actually like us. Cause then again, like we was just doing it for fun. Like, yeah, we like we was just doing it because we were bored and it was a hobby and we just liked doing it. So <clears throat> the fact to this day that people still like the shit that we do for fun is fucking awesome. Well, what's it like to be the leader? Like, you're the leader of this movement. Like, like you know, rappers always say, that's a rapper cliche too. Like, I'm starting a movement. I'm building a movement. My, sh my shit's a movement. But you really it's, did build I a mean, whole situation. I mean, situation. I, guess, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm the mastermind or whatever. But, I mean, to be honest, like, I need those dudes, whether it's the skaters or the photographers or the fucking musicians or the rappers, I need them more than they need me because they inspire me to fucking be better and... And they, 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 they let me know, like, them having my back, okay, this OF shit is real. Like, like those, those dudes helped me out. Like, yeah. a lot of this shit wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for some of these dudes inspiring me to just go ahead and do what I like to do. Because people forget it's not just rappers. It's a group of skateboarders who are very talented and photographers and artists who draw and musicians and rappers and just a whole collective of stuff that I'm into naturally. And those dudes helped me say, fuck it, I'm going to just build something that's everything that I like in one. But what made you, the, what do you think made you the leader of that? Like, to, there's one, it seems like even with that crew, like, they defer to you. Like, they, they look to your leadership. I mean, it was, you know? it was my idea because it started as a magazine when I was 15. Yeah. And I was going to have everything, all my hop, like, I like taking pictures and directing. I was going to have photo essays in there. And I want to, I like, I, I used to, I still have a collection of magazines. I wanted to interview meth heads and fucking sex addicts and like fucked up <laughs> shit. And I, I love music, but I hated music reviews that use big ass words for no reason and got all like, I wanted my music reviews to be like, yo, this shit weak as fuck, don't buy it. <laughs> like, Zero mics. Which I hate music reviews, but like I thought that would have been funny. And then like, I love, I love skateboarding. I, that's what I grew up with. So. Instead of getting putting ads from Baker or fucking, you know, Deluxe, I wanted to shoot ads of my friends doing tricks at the skate park instead of using other people and put it in there and shit. Like, 
I wanted it to be and, and have all my photo photographer friends shoot this shit. And like my friends who's good at designing, they do clothes. Fuck it. Get the photographer dude to shoot the fucking clothes and then we'll put your own ads in there so you don't have to fucking go to fucking Vibe or some other weak shit to fucking put your ads in there. And that's what I was going to do, but it, it went from... The Glad magazine you didn't say didn't XXL because I was there at the time. So. Hey, I used, to, <laughs> I used to fuck with Double XL until last fucking March. Uh-oh, we'll get back to that. I ain't gonna they gave you that. a Nas interview. Come on, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, that Nas interview was awesome. We're going to talk about that, man. But, but yeah, it, it just went... Like, I didn't do the magazine. It just turned into, like, a group of friends who were, like, into shit. Like, I was, like, the web, and, like, I just had a group of friends that were into random things, and then it just turned into this collective, and the fucking music is what brought it out to the world. And then it's time to eat a roach. Yeah, <laughs> fucking that little bastard. Yeah, little niece. Did you get sick real. after? I threw up, nigga. It's in the video. So that's real. Nigga, that shit, that shit ain't fake, nigga. I throw up on spot. Don't ask me to do it right I know now. You, I know you fought on cue. I don't know if you actually vomit on Q Nah, or, I be right? throwing up, like, for no reason. It's crazy. <laughs> like the uh, the fucking it's a Vinny show on MTV. I think like they showed a commercial. Like I throw up on there. Like on cue. It's sick. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Don't put that. Don't put that in the Lord. Of, don't put that in the Lord of Squad or anything like that. Not yet. <laughs> no, but when you talk about back on back to Wolf, like you know, what do I rap about? It seems though you you come back to common themes though. Like you rap about you know your father not being around. And that oh yeah, because like, like that that affected me like. A lot of my friends have dads, so it pissed me off, like, on Father's Day when I want to hang out with these assholes. Oh, I got to take my daddy to dinner, and I'm, I'm stuck at home. I get, hey, Mom, here's a card for Happy Father's Day or whatever, and then I'm, like, bored. So, of course, you know, but I don't know. that The thing with Wolf, like, a lot of the songs have concepts and shit. Like, 48 is actually based off of that Nas interview, and then... That Colossus that song, XL, yeah. that Colossus song, like, I was really at Six Flags with, like, 50 kids actually chasing me, like, no pun intended. It was, like, a mob of children chasing me, and I, like, it was kids standing out, and then Party Isn't Over, that song's actually about me losing my virginity when I was 17. Whoa. Yeah. And then <laughs> How was that for you? It was wild. <laughs> Tell us about it. It was in my grandmother's bed, but I don't want to talk about wow. it. Wow. Yo, you fornicated on your grandma's bed, man? And then, and then Campfire is about, you know, making s'mores and shit. And then I made the song Pigs because uh, fucking Dylan and Eric, the kids who shot up Columbine. Yeah. Like, I fucking, I always wanted to know, like, what the fuck were they thinking? Like, why did they do that? Like, what the fuck? Like. What was their background? I'm not saying what they did was right, but I actually just always wanted to kind of tap into their brains. Like, were they bullied? It's like, were they bullied? Did they, were they abused by a fucking stepdad or some shit? I don't know. So I wrote that song from their point of view, and they probably were nice kids. So on that third verse, he's like, I didn't mean to do any of this. I just wanted someone to fucking say, oh, that shirt is cool or just something, and just shit like that. And then Rusty is fucking... I'm just rapping about everyone that had anything negative to say about me. I sum it up in that verse. And then Trash Wang is fucking... Trash Wang is sick, because... You love those. That's rapping with your buddies. Fucking Trash <laughs> Wang. I fucking love my friends, dude. Trash Wang, every person, every person on Trash Wang... No new friends for Tyler. Every person on Trash Wang doesn't, like... Everyone on Trash Wang aren't rappers. Like, Lucas isn't a rapper. You, Jasper's no, not really? a rapper. Like... But no, people, oh, they're fucking they're tra better, fuck trash wang. Those dudes can't rap. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fucking point. Like, Nakel is a skateboarder. Like, he's in Trans World and Thrasher Magazine right now. Like, and Nakel killed it. It was so sick watching my friends who don't do that shit come to my world. That shit was tight. No, they're getting better as rappers. Speaking as your friends, like, and you mentioned Rusty, you know, it's a very frank song. I feel like, you, speaking of the word duh, Somebody asked you, I think it was on Form Spring or something, if, like, you know, look at the mom who thinks I'm evil, um, yeah. hold that grudge against me. Like, are you talking to Earl's mom? I'm I mean, for sure 136% talking about Earl's mother. Yeah. Because for some reason, she thinks I'm a bad influence on her kid, but, like, he's doing pretty good right now. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't, I'm not the type to just take credit or anything, but, like, like, 
she does not like me for some reason. And I just, I've tried plenty of times to literally just have a normal conversation with her and say, why don't you like me? What did Tyler do wrong? And she just holds How do I rectify it? Whatever it is. And yeah. I totally do not understand it. I don't So that existed it. before he went back to Samoa? She sent yeah, yeah. Samoa like around, like, around the time he got sent away, like, she just, she just started to hate me. And I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it can't be because she thinks, like, drinking or doing drugs or anything because I've, I've never had straight a edge, I've never straight edge had, edge. I never had a sip of alcohol in my life and I don't smoke or do anything so you can't blame me for that like your kids fucking up in school what fucking 15 year old boy isn't gonna fuck up in school like I was fucking up in school my senior year like what the, it's people in college fucking up like what are you talking about so that's, that's the age to fuck up those yeah, are the ages so to fuck up I don't up. understand why she doesn't like me and I just wanted to address that in that song because it was just eating me up that I just never said anything. Yeah, and he's on a song, which makes it makes it. Yeah, cool it makes also. it 20 times more awkward for her because I know she listened to her son verse, and I went before him, so she for sure heard that line. But how did that whole thing start? Like, when, when the whole, when Earl went away and the whole free Earl thing and making the sweatshirts, like, you know, you obviously knew where he was. Did you feel like you just missed him and you wanted to promote that he should come back? Like, what was your I mentality mean, back that's then? that's my fucking friend, so it wasn't even, like, trying to promote more so like, oh, let's, let's make this free girl thing into a campaign and fucking cake off of it. No, it was like, we, the funny thing is he made free Earl up because he got, he fucking was grounded and he made this free Earl thing on Facebook when we were using it. He got sent away permanently or whatever. And then we just started saying free Earl because that was our friend. Like, I don't know how else it's like when hood niggas homies get stabbed or shot. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, rest in peace, Ray Ray. Like, they're they're not doing it to promote, nigga. They friend died. Rip John John. Yeah, like, they just doing it because that's their friend and shit. And then yeah. I guess that just turned into every everybody. Were you angry when Complex kind of revealed the information or that type yeah, of situation? Yeah, Complex is sus. Fuck Complex. Fuck all their employees. I think everyone at Complex are fucking faggots because they make fucking Complex is the fucking debt. Like, they make fucking lists of oh, what your favorite rapper is wearing and fucking the top 20 dicks that Nick Cannon sucked. And, uh, was it awkward when Earl came back? Like, the interaction, like, to get back to the rhythm dude, of, like, your friend's back? And, when, you know. when the first time, the, the first time me and Taco saw Tebe, we call him Tebe, by the way. We don't call, I'm just calling him Earl because you motherfuckers are here before me. <laughs> That's how you know. The first time me and uh, Tra Travis is Taco, by the way. I don't call him Taco. I was just saying that so y'all can know who I'm talking about. But the first time me and Travis, me and Travis saw Tebe when he came back, we was at Clancy's house and he walked in and it was like, we were fucking so, like we were, we looked like three year old little girls just jumping around and just hugging. And then after that, I backed up and realized he was in the same sweater he had on when he left. <laughs> Did he stink? He didn't stink, it was though. The, no, it was just uh. the dustiest shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, two minutes after that, like, we were on YouTube looking at stupid videos like we used to of, like, fucking just stupid shit. And it was sick just to, like, see him again. Like, he got taller. I got taller. Like, it's been, it was, like, two years. Yeah. So it was just sick. And I know it was kind of, like, weird for him because, like, like, he was, like, locked away or whatever. And he comes back and his friends are fucking rich and famous and can't even go to fucking the movies anymore without security and shit. I know he was like, what the fuck? But yeah, everything's, everything's perfect now. Yeah. It's sick. I'm actually stoked that happened because it just came full circle. So I guess that was just fate. Yeah. I remember when I interviewed for Respect, we were talking a little about you and Frank Ocean's relationship and he had certain things that you didn't have yet. You was like, yeah, he's he, older than you, yeah, and like that was know, the dynamic. You was talking the phone, yeah, and Frank's, they would talk, turn into long phone conversations. Yeah, and, like you know? Frank's older than me, and I was just like he he had a he had a nice car, a nice nice house, like night like he had cool shit, and I would just always be like fuck, like that's tight, and he would just always say like dude, like you, you're gonna get it soon, like don't worry about it, like he would just always put that in my head, like don't worry about it, like you'll get that shit, like all right, and he was. He was always the most positive dude, and out of his fucking mind, 100%, that guy is crazy, but, like, <laughs> he, he, always, he always had my back, like, Taco's back, like, because we was, like, broke, and this nigga was, like, 
take like, like, yo, we're hungry. Which, which are trying to eat fucking McDonald's. Nah, like, what the fuck is McDonald's? And he'll he'll take us to some fucking restaurants and shit that we didn't even know existed and shit. And yeah, that Def Jam I, money. In the yeah, beginning. and I met I met a <laughs> bunch of famous people. Around, I, he took me to studios I've never been to and shit because I was recording at Sid's, and I've never like been to big studios. And he was just he was just showing like us like a bunch of shit. So I, I thank him for that. Let's let's talk about your famous friends. Like you know, some people say you shouldn't meet your idols because you know it's disappointing. But but it seems like it's worked well for you. Like Pharrell, B- Erica Badu. Like you even have them on the album. Like talk about meeting people that inspired you and like developing a rapport with them. Meeting Pharrell was crazy because like. Like, I've been like a fucking diehard, it's almost weird, fucking obsessive stand since I was like 11. Seeing this dude who like, who I always would just watch on TV and every magazine I could possibly get, and I know every lyric. He hit up uh, Kelly and was like, yo, uh... Kelly come. Clancy, Christian's Yeah, Kelly wife. Clancy, what up, Kelly? And he, um, he was like, yo, I'm shooting this Maybelline fucking commercial <laughs> in L.A. <laughs> Maybelline. I was like, what the fuck, you're sus, but all right. And I walk in, and, like, it was just fucking, like, like he's real. Like, not even trying to be sus. Like, I, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm a fan of this nigga. So seeing this nigga, like, in real life was the craziest shit. Like, and he put his hand out to shake it, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, this isn't a piece of paper or a television. Like, I could touch this nigga, son. Like... <laughs> And I fucking, we're, we're, we're just kicking it in there, and he's just telling me, like, like he likes my stuff and stuff. And I'm just, I'm fan, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm in there fanning out. Like, I see niggas be trying to be cool, like, oh, yeah, you cool. Like, no, fuck that, nigga. I went down the fucking list of all this shit. I told him what was my favorite shit. I told him what sucked. I told him this and that. <laughs> and, and he was appreciative of, like, he was stoked that, like, it was someone who fucking, like, really fucking admired his art and it was cool and we're we're friends and stuff like he 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 called me not too long ago because i was telling him before wolf came out i was like because i really believe it or not like if i didn't rap i would want to sing but my voice is too deep to sing and the tone that i want to hit so like i gotta get like pharrell and like frank and shit to do parts that i want to do and i'm like stressing to this nigga like fuck like i really want to fucking it's like melodies I come up with, but I'm sick of fucking coming up with melodies and having other people sing it. And he was like, why, why the fuck you ain't doing it? I'm like, my voice is too deep. Like, nigga, you ain't never heard of Barry White? And I'm like, oh, well, oh, oh, well, uh. He was like, nigga, Isaac Hayes? I was like, I'm, uh, uh. He was like, shut the fuck up. Go listen to them and figure it out. And then that's when I was like, fuck it. So on Tree Home, you hear me behind Coco, like, fuck it. Like, I did that and like, I, I get so much advice from him on just little shit. But how'd you get him on IFHY? Like, what was that process of actually getting okay. him on one of your records? I Fucking Hate You was finished already. It was like a three-minute song. <clears throat> and I'm a big fan of Bridges. Like, all the music I listen to have Bridges and stuff. And I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, this is, this is good, but it's not, it's not there. So I'm literally on a couch. My mom's, we're in the living room. My mom's here, and I'm right here with a keyboard and a fucking laptop. And I'm just fucking around with some chords and shit. And I come up with this progression. And I'm like, whoa, this is sick. This is sick. Damn, I need to put this somewhere. So I open up the I fucking hate you beat session. And I just, <clears throat> I just put, I just lay the keys down. And then I'm like, oh shit, but I used the organ for this. So I lay an organ over it. Then I lay the other synths and everything else. And then the fucking drums. And I'm like, whoa, this is fucking sick. I love this. And then a melody just came to my head. And lyrics just slowly start coming with the fucking melody between the chords. <clears throat> but I can't sing, so I'm like, fuck. Who the fuck would sound really fucking for real? It sounds so tight over this. Fuck. That's just in the back of my head. So <clears throat> I fucking export the fucking beat, put it in GarageBand, and I fucking, I just like record a rough of the melody just so I don't forget that shit. Later that night, I hit up for real. I'm like, yo, uh yo, uh, you in Los Angeles? He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here for some stupid shit, but I leave tomorrow. I'm like, fuck, yo, I got this. I'm, and this is like right before the album is due, and this is when he's in interviews saying, yo, Tyler's album is sick. Tyler's album is sick, which I'm mad at because I want everyone to think it's whack, but whatever. <laughs> Expectations. So I'm, 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 hitting, I'm like, yo, uh, I know you love the fucking album. 
it would not be right without you being on it, which influenced a lot of the sounds on it. And he was like, I'll try to make it, but it'll be late tonight. I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever. I go to the studio, um, and then he hits me, and he's like, I'm going to come through. And he comes through, and it was fucking, he was like, all right, what the fuck you want me to do? And this is when it got weird, because, like, it's Pharrell, so, and he has the voice of an angel, no homo. <laughs> Wait, say that again? <laughs> this nigga Pharrell got the voice of an angel, no homo. So it's weird, like, all right, Tyler, what do you want me to do? And I'm sitting here, like, it's like a couple people in the room, and I can't sing, but I know what I want. So I have to sit here and sing. Sing to Pharrell, son, sing to Pharrell. I got to sit here and sing to this grown-ass nigga <laughs> what I want him to do. And it was awkward, but, like, I fucking, I did it, and then he went in there and did it, and I actually, it was, it was, I think, for sure, the best moment of my life watching this nigga sing my melody and my lyrics over my beat. And I've been, I've been, I've been wanting that since I was fucking 11, before I had hair on my dick, like... <laughs> Real talk, and it was so yeah, sick. Yeah, you did. It was. I, I didn't have it at eleven. I, no, no, please. No, nah, we're good. Okay. We're good. But no, nah, yeah. it was sick. Finally <laughs> working with this nigga, and I actually, re I actually recorded it on my fucking. Uh, I went to photo booth, and I just pressed record, and I'm gonna release the video when I'm like fifty. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking Pharrell in the back. See, like I'm fucking bugging out, dude, and this nigga like. And I'm in there like fanning out and then the music stops like here and there. And he's like, yo, Tyler, is that it? And I'm like, then I got to get in a serious producer nigga mode. I'm like, no, it was supposed to be like, uh -huh, uh -huh. and he's like, like this. Uh -huh. No, I'm like, no, you got to go like this and then fucking maneuver. I'll, not many people could say they was fucking vocal producing Pharrell. That is fucking tight. <laughs>